Hey Mark, uh, Dennis Feidner with uh, CFO On The Go, Sage Partner. Hey, I'm going to do that video for you. I'm going to cover a couple of things in order and, and some things out of order, so I apologize, but uh, I'm kind of soon as they kind of make sense here. So, um, let's just do the easy stuff first. So, estimating, I really like to see how you're estimating today, but I'm going to show you just a very simple, uh, we've got electrical, I'll do this one here. So this is a, a, a job that I have. It's an electrical project. Um, very simple uh, one here. So this is what's known as an assembly. And these are the parts that make up that assembly. So uh, I usually refer this to this as this is the recipe. And these are the ingredients that I need to, to make this. Okay. So on that house that you're building, you would do a takeoff. And let's just say you determine that in this house, there's probably not that many. Let's just say there's uh, eight TV jacks. I'd enter eight here. The recipe says for every one of these, I need 150 foot of cable, one jack, a second jack, a box to put it in, and a half hour of uh, journeyman to install it. Okay? And probably don't pay anybody $45 anymore with journeyman, so we'll make that 55 Once I do that, it now extends out my quantities, so I know how many I need to buy an order or take out of my inventory. Uh, same thing down here, this is a phone outlet, same thing, only in this case I need 100 foot. So as you're going through those uh, bids and they identify that, you're just gonna come in here and enter your quantities and then it's gonna basically spit out your extended quantities, your estimated cost, so you can have a, your budget. And then I have the ability to identify which vendors or subs I'm gonna send that work to. Uh, at that point, I can actually come up here, uh, whoops, wrong button, and actually create the purchase order to buy all those. Uh, and we do have clients that actually issue a purchase order to a, what we would call, um, fake sounds so bad, uh, a pseudo vendor uh, where we just say warehouse. And it would actually be a, a ticket for the warehouse to pick uh, the items that they need uh, for that project. And so if I go into another one, I'm not sure what else I have in here. Actually, we sub that out. Very simple, here's the light fixture. Um, I had needed four of them. Again, here's the recipe uh, to do that. And in this case, I actually added a purple sky hook because I needed that. Uh, just added that on the fly, priced it out, and added it to the uh, to the bid. So, works off of uh, what we call um, assemblies and parts. Then we have different bid items. And we'd have to look at, everybody does it a little differently, Mark, but we, we can set up phases. Um, and again, everybody does different. I, I have to know the number of houses you're doing. We probably set up a master job, uh, and then each lot would be a phase underneath that. Sometimes we do a job, and it might include the release and have all five lots on the same same one. So a lot of different ways to do it with uh, with a production builder. So uh, our consultant will sit down with you and determine what you want to get out of it to figure out what the best way uh, to set that up is. But that's the estimated in a nutshell. Pretty simple. <laughs> I say it's simple. Once you get these set up, it's really easy. Uh, just getting those set up, it'll take you a little bit of time, but uh, you can set them up as you need them. And I'm not going to save that. So the next thing on uh, the list is uh, if I go to accounts receivable and I go to progress billing, I'll show you one that I set up for somebody else. So this is one where I'm actually billing lot 20, 21, 22, and I think 23 on here. And just like you, they had five uh, different items that they could get paid on. Uh, and then you said you had three or four, I can't remember. Um, so you would have those here. And you just come in and say, hey, this one's 100% complete, 100% complete, 100, 150. And it would produce the AIA 702, 703 billing. Now, that's lumping four onto one bill. If I wanted to, I could have a lot 20 on one bill, a lot 21 on another bill, a lot 22 on another bill. And if they said, hey, also, we want you to summarize those, I can click this button up here, and it will combine all four of those into one bill. It's up to you. Again, uh, it depends on what builder you're working for and what format he wants it in. Some will take many, several lots on one invoice. Some want each, each lot in each house on a separate invoice. Uh, we have the capability of doing it either way you want to. Okay. So I'm going to jump out of here. 
And so inventory, I'm not going to go into inventory, but inventory uh, does allow you to have multiple locations. So I can have an inventory for the warehouse, uh, inventory in a shop, inventory in a job site trailer, or inventory on somebody's truck. I don't care. And they can move from one to the other. So a guy could come in and say, hey, I need X, I need 100 of these uh, light switches. And he can pull 100 light switches with covers from the warehouse. It'll release the inventory from the warehouse and put that either to your choice directly to the job or B, they can go on his truck and then he'll relieve them from his truck as he uses them. Most guys are not that good about keeping up with their paperwork. So a lot of our clients just say, hey, what job is these going to? And we just charge them out. And the question you may be thinking is, what if I only used 75 of the 20 of the 100? Well, then I can bring 25 back into inventory and credit a job uh, for those same switches. And so we can do that. Um, security. You're looking at the menu on the left here. So if I go into uh, project management, and you can't see me, Mark, I'm going to hit my function 7 button. I can say who's allowed in the project management. I'm going to say the owner, superintendent, estimator, and the owner. So the only people that can open up that menu option, once I check those two boxes, are those two people. If I come down to job reports, I may say that only two people are the same. Two people, okay. But if I come down to this report right here, uh, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Um, let me close that out. I've got a little happy with my mouse there. If I hit my F7, okay, the only person that can run that report is the owner. So each menu option gets secured to a group of people. And, uh, and it works really well. It keeps people locked out of what they're not supposed to be in and uh, allows people access to what they're supposed to have access to. So definitely have the good security. We're definitely going to eliminate duplicate entry. I think we already saw a couple of cases. Uh, if we do the estimate in there, uh, the purchase orders will be automatically created. The budget is already going to be moved over to accounting for cost reporting uh, without having to do that over again. So uh, that is a big deal. Uh, payroll, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but we do do... Uh, Payroll, we have all the ACA forms, Affordable Care Act, uh, state forms, um, and included in that uh, up here is, you know, my um, certified payroll forms. Uh, so we have those as well. I assume you only work in California, but if you work in Nevada, uh, we have that form as well. So we do have certified payroll, and it really is a matter of a couple of mouse clicks uh, to get that produced. My question that I didn't ask and I don't know is uh, whether you do piece rate uh, in payroll, we obviously have the ability to do piece rate uh, as well. If you're doing that on your production homes, uh, we can do piece rate in addition to hourly reporting for the um, certified payroll. So a couple ways to enter payroll. Um, this is the way most of my clients do it. And we have uh, 1,400 uh, Sage 100 clients we deal with. They use a daily field report. Uh, so real simple. Well, I go back up to the top. Here's the date. Here's the job. Here's the superintendent that's reporting it. Here's the people that worked. This is the item of work that they were working on. Regular time, overtime, premium. Certified job. What pay group are they supposed to be paid as? And then how many hours did they work? If you have subcontractors out there, we can track that. Uh, equipment, we can track that and charge equipment to your job if you want to do that. Uh, we track a few other things. Um, down the bottom, if there was any incidents, we can track all of that. And then the other thing is that we had meetings, uh, I had a phone call, call from Bill, here's what we talked about. So everything is documented, it's all in here. Uh, there's a notepad here, I'm not going to open it up, there's a big notepad to keep more notes. Uh, but that's all uh, in the same system. And that information that I just showed you automatically feeds the Fed payroll uh, time card so nobody has to rekey the time card again. Another reduction in uh, doing things two or three times. Job cost, uh, labor cost includes all of your burden, any kind of burden you want, even I, what I would call um, internal burden. Um, a stupid example, I have a lot of concrete companies that go through a lot of odds and ends, you know, chalk lines, tapes, chalk, line levels, floats. Uh, they actually created a payroll uh, deal that they actually collected so much per hour of payroll to pay for those supplies rather than trying to actually job charge them. So uh, it's kind of an interesting thing, but it works really well. Again, I'm kind of flying through here because I try to keep these to like less than 15 minutes. So if I go to accounts receivable and I go to um, receivable reports, you ask for an aging, but most of our clients don't use agings. They use uh, what we call a receivable call sheet, and I'll show you why. Uh, I'm just going to pull this one up real here, quick, real quick here. Um, 
so in this case, it listed by client. So one of my clients is, it happens to be Bill Simpson. And for Bill, that's his phone number, uh, that's his cell phone number and his fax number. Uh, here's some notes that I've kind of recorded in the system. And then on job 27, this is, you know, it says days age, and then this is job 13. So I can look at each individual job, but I also can see a client total uh, in the same place. Uh, I do have the normal plain Jane uh, aging, uh, you, know, you know, 30 days, 60, 90, over 120. Uh, the nice part is, I am going to assume that you use QuickBooks, um, is that we keep the retention out of the aging until the job is completed and we bill for the aging. So it sits in a current column or a retention column. Depends on which report you run. They're shown two different ways. But they don't age that retention as it's being withheld until the job is uh, being finaled out and you say bill the retention and then it starts to age uh, the actual retention. Full inventory. Uh, one of the things I think will be a benefit for you and let me go into uh, inventory real quick here. Um, oops, I don't want to go there. I go here. I don't have very good data in here, but you'll understand what I'm trying to say here in a second. So if I go to this part, and we'll just say this is a light switch or whatever you guys buy a lot of, there's a button here called Purchase History. You're going to see every vendor you've ever bought that from, the date that you bought it, the quantity that you bought, and the price that you paid, with the ability to actually click back uh, to the... Um, actual um, AP entry, which to me is a big deal. So two reports, I think, or one report for sure that I think you'll find a lot of use for is uh, this one here. So give me a second. I'm going to pull up a job. This is fine. Ignore these titles and insert your titles. Pull wire, uh, install jacks, install lighting fixtures, hang ceiling fans, whatever those things are that you do. Uh, mount control box or uh, panel control panel these are the hours that were in the estimate when we put the estimate together it's tracking all those hours by each task these are the hours that you've entered in the payroll so far uh, this is just math this is arithmetic right this is just says i use 52.6 percent of this number here then i'm going to come in here and say hey you know what i'm actually 60 percent complete doing this um, what am i here i'll say 30 percent complete and on this one this is a bad item we're only 20 percent complete when I do that, it's going to tell me how many hours I need to finish it and how many hours over or under budget I am uh, at this point in time. Uh, this is okay as the job's going. This really becomes important uh, at the end of the job when all of these are 100%. I can actually give this information back to my estimator saying, hey, on this job, uh, I don't know what you were thinking, but uh, we missed this one item right here by uh, 75 hours. And so uh, can you tell me what you, th what you were thinking? Or back to the field, what happened here? Uh, obviously, there's a reason. I'm not blaming anybody. It's just to give you the feedback from having that happen again. So that is one report, I think, is with as many guys as you have in the field, uh, as many jobs as you have going on, uh, tracking those labor hours by task, by job, uh, will definitely add value uh, to giving you some better estimates as you uh, go forward. So. That's it in a nutshell. Um, we do have lots of online training that, that, that was important to you. Uh, depending on what system you are, we can migrate some data, at least parts, vendors, employees, uh, clients, job lists, uh, some simple stuff like that. It's pretty easy to um, bring in and out. So uh, that's it. Uh, one thing that you didn't ask for because it's not on the list, uh, and this is a big deal. Our clients absolutely love this. So if I go to Alerts Manager, and I go to, I'm just going to go one of the generic ones here. And there's a little checkbox here. And it basically says, if a job cost exceeds the budget for any individual cost code on any job, send me an email. And it may not be you. It could be your project manager or whoever. But if today I had this much money to do something, and it's a dollar more than I estimated, uh, somebody's going to get an email tomorrow morning uh, warning them that they're over budget. Um, the other thing that our clients like is, and you can change this to, whatever you want, but uh, I issued a change order to an owner uh, 30 days ago, and he hasn't sent it back or hasn't rejected it. Uh, it's going to send me an email saying, hey, you have this change order. It's now over 30 days old since you issued it. Uh, nothing has been approved or, or rejected. What do you want to do? RFIs that were issued. Um, list of employees hired this month. Uh, if you track your jobs really closely, you can actually put your bid list in here of uh, jobs that you have to have bids completed for but for next week. So. 
All these are customizable. This is a killer one right here. Uh, comes with the system. Just knowing that and not waiting on a report to show up your desk a week or two later, knowing today that you're over budget allows you to be a lot more proactive uh, in, make, in fixing those things with, rather than after it's all said and done. Uh, we have the ability to fix things quicker. So anyway, thanks for your time. My name is Dennis. I'm the owner here at CFO on the go. Uh, I'd love to jump online and answer more questions for you. Uh, or anybody else is listening to this, just give us a call. Easy to find at 800-659-5851. So 800-659-5851. Thanks.